Hi, today we're going to take a look at some of the key things you need to think about when either breast or bottle feeding your baby. This is a huge topic, so we're only going to focus on a few things that will help get you started. We're going to start by exploring some of the foundations of having a positive breastfeeding experience. The Department of Health recommends that mums exclusively breastfeed for six months. Then once their baby is weaned onto solids, is breastfed for up to two years. However, in the UK, we see a big drop off in breastfeeding at six to eight weeks. And by six months, only 1% of mums are exclusively breastfeeding their babies whilst up to 34% may be giving a mix of breast milk and formula. Whilst there's lots of reasons that women stop breastfeeding, we're going to focus on two of the most common ones today. The first is finding breastfeeding painful, which can be fixed by getting the latrite in the early days of breastfeeding. And the second is a perceived lack of milk this is unlikely, but we will explore some of the ways that you can tell that your baby is getting enough milk. So let's take a quick look at some of the signs that your baby has a good latch onto your breast. Their mouth is wide open. There should be less areola visible under the chin than above the lip. That's the dark part of the nipple here. The baby's chin is touching your breast, their lower lip is rolled down and their nose is free from your breast. Plus, it shouldn't be painful. It might be uncomfortable for the first 30 seconds or so, but this should subside as the feed continues. Finally, your nipple should come out the same shape as when it went in, maybe slightly longer but not flattened in any way. Whilst breastfeeding is completely natural, it's a new skill that you're having to learn, both you and your baby, so it will take some practice in getting it right. With this in mind, ask for help with the early feeds. Your midwife will help get you started with that first feed, but if you're on the postnatal ward for a few hours or even a day or two, don't be afraid to ask somebody to help you with each feed until you feel confident in recognising what a good latch looks like and feels like. This really is the foundation of a positive breastfeeding journey. Also, ask your birth partner to watch each feed when you're getting help from your midwife, as that second pair of eyes when you're at home feeding your baby without a professional in the room will be really, really helpful. This is the first step in feeding as a team. So how do you know that your baby is getting enough milk? As you can't see the volume of milk you're feeding your baby when breastfeeding, it can be really easy to overanalyze their feeding patterns and worry they're not getting enough to eat. However, this is what you need to look out for to put your mind at rest. Firstly, they've got a good skin tone. They're gaining weight. It's really normal for newborns to lose about five to 7% of their birth weight in the first few days after being born. But within two weeks, they should be getting back to their birth weight. What goes in must come out. So if you're getting plenty of wet and dirty nappies, it's a really good sign that your baby is feeding well. Finally, your baby should come off the breast on their own at the end of a feed and not be looking around for more food. Breastfeeding isn't always plain sailing, but knowledge, determination, and a lot of support will get you through some of these common issues. Firstly, let's discuss cluster feeding. This is when your baby wants to feed frequently with very short breaks in between feeds, usually in the evening, but it can be any time of day. It's entirely normal, but it can be tough for new mums, as many think they're not producing enough milk for their babies. In fact, your baby is cluster feeding as they're simply telling your body that it needs to produce more milk to support their growing needs. This is likely to be linked to a growth spurt or a developmental milestone that they're experiencing, 
and certainly not any failing on your part. The best thing for you to do is settle in with a good box set, plenty of water and some healthy snacks. Other common issues include sore or cracked nipples, which you shouldn't really be getting if your baby is latching well. However, if you do get this in the early days, apply a really good nipple cream, such as Lansano, to the sore area to help with healing. Whilst it may be difficult to do so, one of the best things to do is to keep feeding your baby. If you start to miss, miss feeds, it could cause blockages in your milk ducts, which become infected and cause mastitis. With mastitis, your boobs have red patches, which are hot to touch, and you can feel very, very unwell with flu-like symptoms and a temperature. Again, it's important to keep breastfeeding, to keep the milk flowing through your breasts to avoid any further issues. Stay well hydrated and take paracetamol to bring down your temperature. Then if the symptoms don't improve in 12 to 24 hours, go and see your GP as you may need some antibiotics. The final thing we're going to discuss about breastfeeding today is goal setting. If you choose to breastfeed, recognise it's, it's a journey of small steps. Setting yourself a big goal like, I want to breastfeed for two years, can be daunting and leave you feeling upset and disappointed if you don't reach it for any reason. Instead, think small. Set yourself little goals, feed by feed if necessary, in the early few feeds, your goal may simply be to get the support of a midwife for each feed so that you can really nail the latch before feeding alone for the first time. Try to remember that good teamwork helps you breastfeed, whether that's a second pair of eyes on the latch or someone feeding you as you feed your baby. Also find your local breastfeeding support groups. They can be really invaluable in the early days feeding a baby. And finally, never walk away from breastfeeding on a bad day. It could simply be just that and things will be better in the morning. Whether you're bottle feeding expressed breast milk or formula milk, there are a few things that you need to know. Firstly, whilst it's not possible to overfeed a baby on the breast, it is possible to overfeed a baby with a bottle. This is because it's easier for them to get milk from a bottle than it is from the breast, so they don't register when they're full and they just keep eating. Feeding your baby larger quantities of milk doesn't mean they'll feed less often. It simply encourages them to eat more. So if your baby is taking on lots of milk only to vomit it back up moments later, it could be a sign they're drinking too quickly and overeating. Here are some tips to help you avoid this issue. Give them smaller quantities of milk more frequently. Use a slow flow teat that makes them work harder for the milk and never prop a bottle up in their mouth. Use the pace feeding method. This mimics the way babies breastfeed and stops them from guzzling down a bottle. It helps them take it more slowly pausing for little breaks during the feed so it gives them time to register when they're feeling full. And finally, never force a baby to finish a bottle. If they turn away from a bottle it could be a sign that they're full and after a few minutes if they want more food simply return to the bottle and continue feeding. There's no independent evidence to say that one brand of formula milk is any better than another. So don't worry about buying the most expensive formula on the market, unless you want to that is. Newborn babies need the first milks, as these are the easiest for their tummies to digest, and they can be on the first milks until they turn one, and then switch straight on to cow's milk, rather than any of the follow-on milks, as again there's no evidence that these are any better for your baby. The box of formula will tell you how much milk powder to mix with the right volume of water. Always follow these instructions, as getting the ratio wrong could make your baby ill. It's also important to make up the feeds as you need them, putting the milk powder into boiling water so that it kills any germs. You then let it cool down to body temperature before feeding it to your baby. 
You can test this by dripping the milk onto your wrist. Finally, don't self-diagnose allergies or food intolerances in your baby. Always speak to your GP if you want to move your baby onto a specialist milk. This is because not all formula is recommended for newborns, so your GP will be able to advise the best option that also meets their nutritional needs. The last thing we're going to touch on today is sterilising. Babies are most susceptible to illness in their first 12 months, so whatever goes into their mouth in the early months needs to be sterilised. Dummies, bottles and expressing equipment, for example. There are three sterilising options. Firstly, you can immerse items in boiling water for at least 10 minutes. Secondly, you can use a chemical steriliser, such as Milton tablets. These can be added to cold water and again the items immersed for at least 30 minutes this time. And the final way is to steam the feeding equipment or dummies. This could be with an electric steamer, a unit that goes into your microwave, or even reusable microwave bags, which are great for a weekend away when the car is already packed to the rooftop. Investigate the option that best suits your needs, but unless you're planning to bottle feed from day one, I recommend holding off buying a big electric steamer and simply stocking up on a box of Milton that will get you started. Then, when you're settled into a routine, you'll know if you need a more expensive piece of kit or not. So that's it for today. In our next session, we're going to be looking at how to look after your mental health and well-being as a new parent. I look forward to seeing you then.